What is up, everybody? It is time to pour a little Creedmoor on it. And we're going to pour a little Creedmoor on the little Creedmoor, which is the 22 Creedmoor. Joining me today, Mr. Jim and Mr. Ryan Muckenhern. I don't know why I didn't use your last name. I just didn't. Ryan, what the heck's going on with this little barn burner? Well, here's the deal. You take a 6.5 Creedmoor case, you run it through a 22 caliber um, die, the same body dimensions, but make the neck smaller. You put a really heavy... 22 caliber projectile on there and just like wow phenomenal really heavy so yeah. we're talking like yeah like 90, 70, 90 grains Ooh. So, well so, okay 73 to 90 okay yeah and and what are and what are we getting because of this uh very high bc very okay. high velocity remarkable cartridge um laser laser this was a wildcat was it not? Uh, it is what uh, what was the when did this wildcat sort of become a thing? I remember some oh, people talking about it. Maybe I'm sure five years ago. I'm sure yeah. the second you could put your hands on that case, somebody somewhere decided we're necking it up, necking it down. Oh, the like when the six five Creedmoor became a thing. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, it, yeah. the race yeah. begins. To I the, uh, I became cognizant of the twenty two Creedmoor. Oh, I I yeah five years ago. Yeah, maybe. that sounds about right. We're in the old building. Yep. I I sat by uh, Tom Leatherberry. He yep. was. Uh, Lusting over one, he was oh. very, very interested. He he loves he loves stuff like he that. He does, he does. It's very much up his alley. Yes, he's like take the lightest weight, you know, like highest BC, all this fancy stuff, wildcat cartridge, and stick it in a thirty pound gun. Yes, <laughs> right. Preferably an AR. He's recoil yes. aware. <laughs> he's recoil. He aware. might be. He might be. So this thing is pretty much uh, so the twenty two Creedmoor. It's it's basically for precision rifle shooters. Now it's funny we just got done talking about the three hundred PRC where we're saying you know there is some stuff that's maybe lighter, more comfortable to shoot, more designed for precision stuff. But maybe obviously it's not going to put down the you know a uh, bear in yeah. some distance away. This is kind of like we were talking about. This is for shooting steel real far away, being very accurate with it. I think if you wanted you a, could, a pretty naughty antelope stuff. and mule deer cartridge, it wouldn't be bad. Well, yeah, yeah, you could hunt some stuff like Absolutely, that. Absolutely, you, you could. Know, people hunt stuff with two twenty three. Absolutely. Um, you know, how, how does that... Okay, again, check your local regs, right? But you've got this, like, you're, you're, like you said, you're talking about like a 73, 80-some grain pill yep. going... Mach three like and a half. 34, 35-ish, yeah. mm. somewhere in there. Spicy. Spice. I mean, there's a lot of gas there. It's a complete. But you like, to, does the projectile diameter make it? Sometimes, like maybe I, I wonder if. Oh that, yeah, like there's minimum there's minimum diameter requirements for big game in a lot of states. Yeah, but if for those that don't have it, like oh, I think it'd be this like would be a lightning darling cartridge with the right bullet. Yeah. So what I wonder uh, as well is okay. So we took a six five Creed. We just connected down to twenty two. Stuck a bullet in it, right? Is it really? It sounds like it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Was this just one of those things where the stars aligned and everything was just right? And that also, you know, the six five Creedmoor's case also happened to work really good with the twenty two. Or was it more just convenience sake? We already have this case, snag it down to twenty two. Like, is there a way to even further optimize this? You know, or did? I mean, it's nothing remarkably new because if we look at like a twenty two two fifty Ackley okay. or uh, an old cartridge called a twenty two Cheetah. They're really not that different. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Where this shines, though, is like, again, we think about the intelligent case design in the Creedmoor lineup. And even 30TC, where this all came from. Um, like minimal or minimized case dimensions, maximum output, um, nothing goofy about them. They feed reliably. reliably. They're, they're the right size, the right capacity, et cetera. Um, and they seem to work well thus far with every bullet diameter that's been put in them, either commercially, semi-commercially, or wildcatted. Um, and I think that it was it was bound to happen, right? So nothing, nothing a twenty two two fifty AI does is better than this case. Okay. Okay. Um, in fact, you're going to get away with better performance out of a twenty two Creedmoor. Hmm. Um, the twenty two Cheetah, uh, its downfall is it's still the full three oh eight length. So seating the bullet out at the length required to take advantage of the powder capacity within the case nullifies its use in, in like a repeating magazine of conventional size or format for a 308. Whereas oh. this, you, 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 you still win because the case is the right size. So a 22 Cheetah was kind of like a single shot um, gun kind of Well, thing. so when it came out, I, the high BC long profile 22 caliber bullet was not it didn't really exist so it mm -hmm. was just like a smoker of a varmint cartridge oh. yeah so you'd be putting like a you know 
60 grain V max in it and pushing it at warp speed and decimating prairie dog towns and coyote populations everywhere. This is a completely different animal. Okay. It can still decimate those prairie dog towns and coyote populations everywhere. It's just, there's a whole different spin on 22 center fire. Yeah. Like it, it, it is so far removed from farm at cartridge um, and more so along the lines of long range cartridge. Mm-hmm. It kind of bridges an interesting, I mean, okay. It bridges an interesting gap that you've got between, you know, there's like your rimfire stuff or, you know, if you're just shooting squirrels and rabbits and mm-hmm. stuff. Then there's like the 223, which everyone's always kind of like, is it enough? Is it not enough? But it's great for coyotes, stuff like that. Yep. And there's obviously like 308. It's it's almost kind of taking nearly all of those. It's maybe not obviously getting quite up to like that 308. But it could, you know, if somebody is there and they're like, well, I want a gun that I can shoot. Oh, I don't know. What are those dang things that I hate so much that are always in my in my stuff? Wood woodchucks. Wood yeah. wood I want to shoot yeah. a woodchuck, and maybe I want to shoot if I'm not restricted. A white-tailed deer, hot dog. Now you could do that with a two twenty three. You could, but right. you're, to- you're towing marginality. But then also, let's say I want to go out and I want to shoot precision rifle too. Twenty two Creedmoor. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, and people do that with two twenty three. Mm-hmm. But two twenty three, I hear people. You know, like there's a certain there's a certain point where it starts to lose a lot of. Gas, there's right? some limitations there, yeah. right? D- does this sort of push its way further? Oh, yeah. significantly than yes. the two twenty three. So, guessing. good friend JC out in Utah, if you're listening, you know who you are. Uh, he shoots his twenty two creed more to a mile. That's cool. Yeah, this uh, is boring. That's cool. Yeah. <sighs> Every time, Mark. Every time we you talk you end up cartridge. wanting. Whatever we talk about, that happens yeah. to me too. Yeah, it's uh, I bet it doesn't even like re- recoil. Just it's kind of shakes, <laughs> and then you get <sighs> pushing it. That's so it's so a point cool. two two four mm-hmm. diameter bullet, going very fast. Definitely heavy, right? So yes. requiring as per usual a faster twist rate. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Something in, I think I was reading Eights, like seven, 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 seven six and a half. Fives. Yeah. Ooh, six point five. But you're loading this, right? Yeah. You're not uh, there's a, there's a couple already. outfits that are loading ammunition now, but like I've got a set of dies. I've got a bunch of cases. Which when you see there's outfits that are loading ammo, mm-hmm. it's what's the difference between that and like just factory ammo? Um, like you would go to I them guess, and- I guess it's quote factory ammo and that it's coming out of a facility that loads ammunition, but it's like a boutique. Yeah. Yeah. Like custom loading. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Like a fitted suit. Yeah. It's there not just go. it's not just Marshalls. It's a step above that. Do they sell suits at Marshalls? I've never Probably. been into a Marshalls. I, don't know. I, don't, I can tell you. I have two suits. That's one more suit than I have. <laughs> uh, uh where were we? <laughs> I don't know. I think the merit we, we the, got lost in Marshalls. I think, I think that happens to, a lot. I think we're going to Marshalls. The, yeah. the the merit in this quasi wildcat. Yeah. It's toe on the line. There's factory produced brass for it. It's it's like it's you might as well just put a bow on it. It dang it. I mean, you were talking about you know the 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 coyote predator side of things. I mean, I look at this thing and I'm like, holy mackerel, that would be. A, I mean, you're gonna you'd anchor some dogs with that thing for oh, sure. Oh yeah. I think with no the right, doubt. I think with the right bullet, you can anchor anything 300 pounds and under pretty pretty handily. Yeah, and f- probably more. Hmm. Hmm, Jim. Another hmm. Another hmm. And I feel like you could get it if you got it in one of those like, um, oh, I don't know, you, you get whatever action. What what kind of action are you going to put this in? Can it go in pretty much anything? Any, anything chambered in a 6.5 Creedmoor or a 308 or a 22 Which is everything. Yeah. So you get a Tika, yep. let's say. Throw it in one of those KRG Bravo oh. chassis. Yep. Just put a bipod on it. Just put it right on. Oh, my gosh. Jim, yeah. it's practically built. You're done. You get one. Yeah, essentially. Oh, actually, we, I have a 6.5 Creed in a KRG chassis. It's not a Tika. It's a. It's one of those remage barrels. Remember, it's a thing oh, yeah. I took mm-hmm. that PRS? You spin that barrel off, you put a 22 Creed more in it. Oh. If you're in business. Oh. Seriously? That's just basically how it works. That's it, man. Even, like, with the headspace and all the stuff? And yeah. The, I mean, but you, then, you'll take into consideration when you do it, but there's no... Yeah. I guess some, that's garage work. Then I would start to wonder... Why would I ever even put the six five Creed barrel back on? Different applications. Yeah. How different? I mean, I get you know, like a ninety grain bullet versus a one forty three grain bullet. Correct. And, you know, I would 
probably venture to not even consider shooting a twenty two Creedmoor at an elk. That that would uh, I don't believe there is no. a, a state law that will allow that. Right. Whereas yeah. there are plenty of people out there who will shoot a six five Creedmoor at mm-hmm. an elk. Um, your opinions on that, whatever. Um, but uh, <laughs> it I just it is what it is. All right, I'm not saying anything. But um, okay, yeah, there may be a reason to put the six five Creed barrel back on. But it'd be I feel like I would wind up shooting a twenty two Creed a lot more. I haven't even shot one yet, and I already know I would. It zaps. <sighs> Neat. Very. It's intriguing. Quite intriguing. And also, Ryan, I noticed, uh, again, the coffee cup here, which I guess is... I think you... Uh, it's. I think you're... Um, I think you're trying to press my buttons. Uh, before we get into that, one more question, though. What is that 90-grain bullet that you're sticking in this thing? Is there's, it, a, there's a variety of them. What are they? I actually... Because I'm so used to just, you know, it's like... 223s and stuff going out of ARs. Usually I'm seeing 75 grain. Yep. And that's like, whoa. So Hornady's got some heavyweight options. Um, Burger, Sierra. Um, I'd have to look if JLK is still making bullets because I haven't looked at that brand in a decade. Um, what's what's pictured here on Mark's? So we've got the, 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 the Sierras, the Hornady's, and then I did yep. see some burgers. It's not pictured here, but that's what that's the other thing I saw was yep. the Are burger stuff. Most of these, like the light jacketed Yeah, stuff. Ma- match style. Okay. Yep. So if you wanted a hunting bullet, if yeah. I was going to pick one. Yeah. Let's hear that. It'd be like the barn 70 grainer. Okay. okay. What's the construction on that? Solid homogenous. Oh, yeah. So when it hits something heavy, there's no explosive behavior. It's just, just freight train. Punishing. It's just going to mushroom and drive. Double diameter and... Center home. Yeah, that would that do would it. be the one. That yep. would do it. Mm-hmm. But then the ninety grain, or what are you using? What what game would you use that on? Or would you not use that? I, on I, game? I, That's just what you're using on uh, uh, steel. On steel. Okay. Yeah. Got, got it. Yeah. Got it. I'm sure it would work for famous. the higher BC. Yeah. Okay. Let it be known too. I want to th- I want to point this out here. Oh, Jim, are you borrowing my notes that I printed off? Not really. Uh, mostly, I just wanted to show this real fast. So for the viewers <laughs> out there, you see Mark's stack of papers here. Oftentimes. Uh, we got a little information on the 22 Creedmoor here. Yep, yep, that's good. Yep, hit print. Uh, when we, as soon as we got to the Wikipedia page, did not preview clearly because we start getting to some pages where this page this left page intentionally has, blank. Uh, about one sentence on it. But even better yet, we start getting to the ads section. So even when Mark reads the things that he's printed, uh, even when Mark reads, he has to take a break for ads. Hmm, what ads? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, well, hold on. We're going to find him. Oh, here we have all the references. Jim, I th- that's good. Yeah, well, you got to check your references. Did he throw the ads th- away before I think we I could found point him. him out? He found the ads? <laughs> he's, <laughs> oh, he's, st- he's standing on them. He took all the ads out. There was yeah. a lot of ads that got printed out in this, everybody. Oh, that's an exagger. They're exaggerating. Well, I we, I noticed at one point when we were trying to find the cartridge that we were on in your Wikipedia pages that you had to flip through about seven, eight, maybe? By the way, we're out of paper. <laughs> And ink. So, uh, gonna and electricity. To call that printer guy again. <laughs> but on that note, um, anything else that we missed about the 22 Creedmoor? I don't know. Fast, I mean, it's flat. Pretty, it's, I, to, I just can't get over that they were like, yeah, we'll just take a case that exists, neck it down to 22, and you have something that's so extraordinary. You would think that there needs to be, there has to be more, you know, fiddling and in, in maths and calculations and stuff. But no, they were just kind of like... Let me bring this back to Jimmy. You have a, a an engine block casting, rough dimension. You're like, we can make this an eight-cylinder, or we can put a whole bunch more smaller cylinders in it. Same displacement, same dimension, way different output. Yeah. The six-liter Ferrari V12, V, the six-liter GM. Look at you. Sprinkle a little six liter on it. Okay. Yep. I use that. That that's my favorite. That's my only motor reference. That's the only motor I know. I think I've heard more come out of your mouth, but that one was pretty good. Okay. Well, I, it it made sense. <sighs> All right. Well, on that note, everybody, um, we'll catch you on the next one. Catch you on the actually that that. I'd like to ask the listeners, do you have a 22 Creedmoor? Are oh, you yeah, thinking about getting one? If you do have one, do you love it? Have you been super impressed? Have you been unimpressed? Did it replace something that you had before? Yeah, is there anybody out there who got the 22 Creedmoor and was like, overrated? We want to know. 
All right. Asking for a friend. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.